I had a segment on my morning show called Too Stupid to Live. Yes, they walk among us. It's not about people who deserve to die. It's about people who, when you meet them, you wonder how they've lived as long as they have. Have you met people like this? For example, I'm watching the running of the bulls, and it occurs to me it's not really the running of the bulls. It's the chasing of the idiots. And it goes on for almost a week. It's like Jack asked the miniseries. It really is. Yeah, anyway, the, and, then, and, and I'm reading USA Today last week. Got an old copy of USA Today. There's a section on the back of one page that covers all the states. And I always read it because every now and then you'll find a gem, a comedy. And sure enough, right there, Indiana, Dateline, Indianapolis, two guys attempted to rob a gun store at Knife Point. <laughs> <clears throat> and my book, Too Stupid to Live. Now, I could have gotten away with those stories because the radio station was in a little town called Raleigh, North Carolina, my old hometown. And if I made fun of people in, thank you, made fun of people in Pamplona or in Indianapolis, I could have gotten away with it. But the people I made fun of, and Dave will appreciate this, or not, the people I made fun of were the employees of local businesses I had bumped into the day before. Yeah, local sponsors' businesses. And I could have gotten away with that if I left out the name of the business, the location, person I talked to. Well, what kind of story is that? So anyway, and by the way, the consultant they had hired is, is partly at fault because he said, look, you're competing with shows coming in by satellite. Howard Stern, Don Imus, John Boyne Billy, blah, blah, blah. You need to be local, very local. Don't just say you went to the bank. Give the branch the person you talked to. So, okay. So I went to First Citizens Bank, Ridgewood Shopping Center branch, spoke to a young woman named Anne Marie, gave her my radio paycheck, one of my last. And she gave me a receipt and a piece of paper with a number on it, and she pointed at the number she had written down and said the following, I think that's right. <laughs> Next morning on the radio, I said, you know, as I'm retelling the story, Anne Marie, you think that's right? I always considered banking something of an exact science. <laughs> Ever pictured you folks here at First Citizens Bank, Ridgewood Shopping Center branch, locking the door at 5 o'clock, rounding off. <laughs> I said, you know, I can live with things that aren't precise, glasses in about an hour, pizza 30 minutes or less, but when I call up First Citizens Bank, Ridgewood Shopping Center Branch, and ask for my checkbook balance, I don't want to hear $1,000, give or take. <laughs> At this point, Dave, by the way, is starting to sweat. Because <laughs> I am a, a radio salesperson's nightmare. But anyway, the uh, president of the bank, the president of the bank, called the president of the radio company who called me on the carpet a well-worn path, I assure you. <laughs> Story number two. Oh, by the way, I cost, a, I cost a station. I told Dave this last night. The largest single account any single DJ ever cost a station. One morning I came in cranky and we had a car dealer. Car dealers and beer distributors are the bread and butter of FM radio. I mean, they, they pay the bills. Anyway, a big car dealer had bought a, an ad on our station every day for nine years. I mean, just a huge account, $57,000 account, been with us forever. He was a, a kind of a plus size guy, and, and I don't know if you know this about car dealers, but they love being in their own ads, their own TV ads. So he had a real slick ad for about 47 seconds, and then they tacked his big behind on, and they shot it from above, and he's wearing an ill-fitting three-piece suit. He looks like Jabba the Hutt. You know, but bring but the Leah to me. So that when I came in cranky, we're discussing state symbols. You know, state tree, state bird, state flower. Okay, so my partner makes a mistake of going, what's a state mammal? I said, I believe it's a whale, and I think it's that car dealer, Bobby Murray. <laughs> the local newspaper sent him a, an email with, a, with an ad they thought would be a great idea for the weekend. It said this, and I quote, this weekend only Bobby Murray Chevrolet, whale of a sale, come meet Shamu. <laughs> <laughs> story number two. I'm in the grocery store, the express lane. It's a grocery store called Harris Teeter. It's a big southern chain of grocery stores. And the express lane, and the kid working behind the register is 18. And you can tell, I know you know kids like this. Bless his heart, he couldn't care less. He's 18, his hormones are raging. He wants to make enough money to buy a car and some Clarisil. That's it. But somebody's told him, every time somebody comes to your register, you must say the following. Welcome to Harris Teeter, how are you? So he's going through the motions. He gets to me and goes, welcome to Harris Teeter, how are you? And by the way, I'm adding energy to the impression. <laughs> the kid would have to kick it up a notch to be a slacker. When he says, uh, welcome to Harris Teeter, how are you? I said, tell you the truth, I got a great big giant wedgie, how about you? <laughs> Nothing. 
No, I will tell you this, the three people in line behind me are now paying attention. How bad can it be? I handed my two apples. I was gonna have a little snack, two apples. And, and morning radio, by the way, stand-up comedy, you can repeat the same jokes over and over and over. Morning radio is gonna be fresh every day. So I was constantly looking for a comedy opening that I could retell on the show. I had to get the two apples, and he gave me the, the straight line I was looking for. He goes, will there be anything else? Funny you should ask. Those two apples you're holding, I don't want them. I want everything else in this store. You know what Bright Boy says? Paper or plastic. I said, no, you're not listening to me. I don't want those apples. I want every other item in this Harris tea. Well, he stops. I'm thinking he's vapor locked. 30 seconds later, he comes around and he says this. I'm sorry, sir. You see, this lane is 10 items. <laughs> Apparently during the 30 seconds, he was actually counting the items in the store. When he got to 11, he knew, hell, I was in the wrong line. <laughs> manager of the Harris Teeter called the manager of the radio station, you know the drill. Now, the last story, my personal favorite, it's a Texaco station. I'm out there pumping gas. Again, it's morning radio. I need comedy. Six, seven minutes a day. Pumping gas on top of the pump is what I'm looking for. In a metal frame, there's an inducement. They want you to get a Texaco credit card. They took a regular size credit card, photoshopped it huge. The only difference between the big one and the little one, in the lower right hand corner of the giant credit card, it says this, not negotiable. Okay, here's my feeling on this. If you can get the clerk to accept a three foot by two foot cardboard credit card, you deserve the gas for free. So I popped it out of the frame, put it behind my back. I sashayed inside. Now you know what I'm thinking. He'll laugh, I'll laugh, I'll pay for the gas, I'll have a story for the radio. And by the way, this is the one that finally got me fired. Uh, the, well, it's kind of a cumulative effect. David Dunn. Anyway, <laughs> ulcers all around. Anyway, the, uh, I walk in and the guy goes, uh, $15 worth of premium unleaded. I said, yeah, well, put her on this. Okay, to my surprise and delight, he picks it up. <laughs> He's looking it over. I'm starting to think, son of a gun, he's gonna take it. <laughs> Six pack of mud, bag of Doritos. Yeah. <laughs> After about 30 seconds, he goes, hey, I can't take this. As if there was ever any doubt. It's better. I can't take this, Mr. Doe. <laughs> No, I shop here all the time. You can go ahead and call me John. <laughs> he goes, well, I can't take this, John. I go, well, why not? He goes, look here, she's done expired. <laughs> and so did my radio career. That's my time. Enjoy the Beatles. Thank you very much.